here with the North Amber team at Infocom 2023 at the Orlando International Convention Center. I'm conducting a series of interviews with some of our key manufacturer partners and talking about the latest and greatest technologies that they have on offer. Let's go and see what's in store. I'm here with Rob Moody from Matrox. Yeah. Rob, you're the strategic partners manager here. Um, Infocom, day two. How's the football been so far? Football has been excellent. As you'd expect in a show like this, you haven't just got the, the Pro AV installers walking around. There's a lot of the end users as well. And yeah, of course, that's going to be the sports stadiums, the other universities, the houses of worship. Yeah, all, all of our marketplaces are here. It's the nature of this show. Yeah. When you're out here talking to customers and end users, when you're talking to um, the, the British customers or people from, from the Terrence or from, or from EMEA, but what's driving the conversations from an international perspective and the reasons for you being here in particular? One of the, the important reasons for me being here was uh, is as part of the IPMX initiative. Mm -hmm. And I've spent most of my time at the show here actually on the IPMX booth. Okay. And so yeah, that's that's been a big cooperative exercise between a number of different manufacturers, and yeah, I'm one of the bodies that Matrox put on that uh, on that booth. Right. So so the people I've been talking to have been interested in how's this standard evolving, and yeah, that's that's not what have you got? What does it do? That's what's this about? So we'll get some time to go over and have a look at that. Great. Shortly, yeah, and, uh, yeah. It'd be great to see you exactly what you're what you're yeah. doing over there on that stand. But as, as always, there's, there's always technology steps on, on all of the booths, and we're no different in, in that respect. You know, we've got a lot of engineering going on, and it shows in all of the different products that we're... Uh, we, we can't have all of our products on show. It's too much. It's an expensive product portfolio. Yeah. So what are the highlights? What's the, the main things that we're, we're showing on the booth here today? Probably the, the biggest thing is the, is the cooperation with Intel. Now, this, this is... This is unprecedented that a company the size of Intel should choose Matrox as the vehicle for bringing their discrete GPU chip into these markets. But that's what they've done. And they've done that because Matrox brings a lot of knowledge of the markets that they didn't have. So the control rooms, the uh, the digital signage, all the things that our, our traditional users would say, yeah, that's what we use Matrox for. They know that. They've seen that. Yeah we could bring them the knowledge they didn't have so that together we bring the solution that you were talking about to the uh, to the users so there's a lot of intel based graphics cards and that's that's entirely new there's a whole new chapter for us which we'll talk about a bit later okay so we're at another part of the, the booth what are we looking at now rob right well this is classic wall control environment so let's see uh, easy easy to spot isn't it they always they always look a bit like this <laughs> um, what's different about this one is all of these decodes and there's 36 decodes that's happening up here they're all HEVC you've never heard those words out of Matrox before have you no so this is HEVC decode that's happening on that new uh, Luma card still part of the Mura environment still controlled by our, our Mura software that we know and love fits into the API so that you know, other, other softwares are available and they can control it too but the decodes are happening on the card. Wow. So you want a few more cameras? Well, you put another card in, you've got a bit more decode power. And it's all related to the to the graphics that we spoke about in the in the, in the, in the Luma video. But you know, this is, uh, you can see the system in there. The, uh, so we've, uh, we've got some output cards, the Lumas. Um, we've got, the, uh, and you can actually see the uh, um, little cable going across between those white connectors that we mentioned so that they, uh, there's no uh, no tearing between the different cards so that's uh, that that frame lock as we call it is, is critical but you know lots of things no stuttering all controllable from uh, from our mirror software in, in and it's a fantastic system. visual representation to, to the customers that are coming past or the people that are interested in this to see this yeah. sort of visually it's a great yeah. representation so so this this is this is, this is obviously a uh, um, a transport control room. Yeah. You change the content on the screens, and it's any other control room. Yeah. It's a fantastic. It's fantastic. What we've got here is a control desk, and you can see there are three um, XDO3 receiver units. Why are there three? Because each one's driving a, its own 4K monitor. The uh, in in days of uh, days of old, that presented a bit of a problem. Separate uh, receiver units. One, uh, one user, is that really going to be one mouse? The, uh, so you're now moving but the mouse, not plugged into a unit, but you're moving the mouse between the units. That's special. Yeah? 
its home is the control room. Yeah, yeah. They're the people who've uh, who've got lots of uh, lots of different uh, machines with different things that are going up on the on the wall. So that's his spiritual home. Probably the biggest user base is the uh, um, auto product automation. Yep. So they're the people who've uh, who've got this uh, their systems a long way away, mm -hmm. and they want to uh, want to switch between them. The blue light community, they're classic KVM users. Yeah. They, uh, um, so if you're you're phoning a nine 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 number, mm -hmm. you know, typically they've got three screens in front of them. Maybe it's a map of the area, the the, the, the text that they're uh, that they're having as they're entering the conversation in. Uh, yeah, some look up thing whether it's, it's a, oh, there's been an accident an accident I can see this uh, um, this has chem code I don't know what it means this, they're looking it up they can say how far away the unit is mm -hmm. these are the instructions if somebody's lips have gone blue yeah that's this and those computers are not under their desk you know they're, they're somewhere else classic KVM land so KVM is used in lots of places from Matrox of course it is always a multi multi screen lots of pixels environment as well as the, the lots of systems. Well let's have a little look at, around at some of the other technologies. So what can we see on this part of the booth? Right, so here we're seeing the, uh, the products that Matrox have, uh, have introduced that lean on the IPMX standard, which of course is the, is the future of, of AV over IP, the one that lets lots of different manufacturers all coexist on whatever system they've got, whether it's 1 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig. Yep. In fact, we've got all three of those networks here on the, uh, on the screen over my shoulder here. We've got the same bit of content, and it's being distributed uncompressed over a 25 gig network, lightly compressed over a 10 gig network, and moderately compressed over a 1 gig network. And the, uh, the clock you can see, uh, see on there, you know, it all originates from the, uh, from the same source. Yeah, you can see. So, so you, can, you can judge for yourself how much latency there, uh, there is. <laughs> it's, yeah. not it's, it's not visible. It's certainly not visible. The, um, as well as that, of course, we've got our conductor IP uh, control software as well. This is this is a standard um, NMOS API. Anything that's IPMX would be able to control these um, these products, and our software conductor IP would be able to control any NMOS uh, NMOS product from any manufacturer. This is this is a big step in, yeah. in, in making control programming easier for, for integrators to do. The, uh, so. We have obviously a, a family of convert IPs, some that do SDI, some that do HDMI. The same box, incidentally, is input or output. So when I say it's HDMI, at one end it would be HDMI input, at the other end it would be HDI out. And HD base T. Now this is a, a, a very nice wrinkle in the, uh, in the IPMX story because it allows you to join up a room of HD base T to another room of HD base T that are more than 100 meters apart. And that, of course, is the, the traditional limitation yeah. of HD base T. It does 100 meters. Fine for within a room, not so good for between rooms. Yeah. And being able to put it onto the, uh, um, the network now means that room can talk to that room. They can export, they export their content without going through HDMI. Because the other approach would be say, OK, let's take HD base T, put it into an extender, take an HD, HDMI extender, take HDMI out and convert it back to HD base T. A lot of conversions that have gone on then that are needless. Yeah. So that's what we're showing with the uh, here as well. We've got HD base T signals that go into the network, and we've got network signals that can go into the HD base T, and it all just works. Yeah. It's, this, is, this is joining up things that previously couldn't be uh, couldn't be joined. So the control is either through our uh, conductor IP um, software interface, which is chargeable, because remember there doesn't need to be Matrox product in the network, yeah. so we're not just going to give that away. <laughs> and what we do give away is, is a little bit of software that only works with Matrox uh, hardware through the same API, yeah. and a web interface that would uh, only work with the, uh, the Matrox stuff as well. So there we go. So it's it's like a big story. Solutions. You've got a huge amount of innovation that you've added into now, just providing people with much more usability of the solutions that you've had. Yeah. Um, nice steps forward in technology which is something that we've not seen for some time there's been a real stagnation in some cases of technology and, and it seems that the matrox have particularly clearly invested in r d and the advancement of the technology absolutely and i, and I guess the, the the aspect of the story that doesn't jump out from it is that this works on its own without anybody thinking about ipmx so if you said 
actually I'm not interested in this inter interoperability with other brands. I've just got an in-room product uh, project. I want to move it from A to B, as we've seen. Whichever technology you thought was best for that room, this works with us at both ends. No consideration of, uh, um, of interoperability. So this, this stuff is, is ready to go. Okay.